My name is Ramsony, and welcome back to Iritus, Lord of the Damned. Alrighty then, let's go with Serpent Frog. Uh, your levels up still need to be allocated. Let's get your Never Miss and well, additional minion. attacks. Excellent. Don't have level 3 minions yet, so we can't really do anything about that. The minion positioning is correct. Talent tree. Uh, okay, so yeah, we are still saving up a lot of potions, so we'll still wait on that. And then after that, probably up the Aya tree in order to get to Relentless Evil. That said... <sighs> Bloody Rose can be pretty good. But also, Bloody Rose is... It, it guarantees to inflict a critical hit. So all the extra luck I'm stacking on my characters doesn't affect Bloody Rose. The hell? Oh, so this just deals more damage, naturally. And then I rely on my own chance to crit. Yeah, I think we will be using Master's Rose pretty commonly. So I don't know if we can afford to go for uh, Relentless Evil. But I don't know if you can afford to win without Relentless Evil. Especially without Relentless Evil, the Standard of Darkness, or the Amulet of Vigor. We need one of those really, really quickly. All right. Nothing we can really do about anything right now, so... Actually, is there? Because if I'm not going for Relentless Evil right now, I get Scalpel. Amateur Surgeon. Amateur Surgeon first, and then Grey Matter as quickly as I can get it. Yeah, I think I need to do that before Ayer anyway. Transformation, the yeah. will becomes free. Now, I do have the ability to heal a bunch of minions in the next space, so... As long as no one dies here, we're all a-okay. The enemies have a lot more initiative than us, which is a little bit surprising to me. I need my Brides of to have a little bit more initiative. Uh, also, I think I'm going to defend just because my Bride of is in third position, which I think is Harkonian. Yeah, it is. Uh, yikes. Just because that seems like a really bad idea. Really bad time for us. Oh god, that got redirected. Yikes. Oh uh, no. Okay, we get uh, we get hit with a sinister strike almost certainly here now. Come on, move him. Damn it. Got redirected again. At the very least, my Bride of Eridus that is a little bit worse to wear right now is in the absolute back line. <clears throat> That whole thing of the Mad Mage just constantly casting here and having the Stone Golem directly in front of them uh, is not good, as it turns out. Not, not, not good. Oh God, stop dancing. There you go. You actually finally got to knock you out of one. God, again. Ugh! Hawk, please! Oh, do I actually try and stress out these? No, I can't stress them out! Now you became inspired! At the very least, the mage wants to escape. That is really lucky. That was 1% roll on the mage. Uh, changing their intent to wanting to escape there. I think then I can actually stress them out. Especially because I get to shield banger twice in a row. This one's voice in its bowels just as it died. So you got one of them down. I move Hawk to the absolute back line. The Stone Golem does not have attacks that hit anything except for the front two lines, so we don't have to worry about that as soon as it's just the Stone Golem on the field. One more got him. for the stockpiles. Mad Mage runs away. Uh, we can still use the magical attack there. And then each of you uses your armor ignoring ones. I'm almost certain they can't hit the third line. If they can, I'm going to be really sad. Never mind, they can't. It's fine. We get a full heal after this fight, by the way, which is going to be so damn good. Oh god. That is going to be so efficient. 
a predictable outcome. Saves us like six trips into the mortuary. Sorry, six, four. Uh, swap moms back into the party and then literally just move forward one space to get the heal. Great. All right. Now we have a solid party. Everyone should be fully healed. I've got three level threes and I'm missing a level three in my Brides of Iridus right now. One thing I have been thinking about is possibly changing to the Glass Dagger. It's extra accuracy and extra damage until the battle ends, but it's removed when a minion takes damage. So this is the kind of thing that I would want to put on my characters at the same time as I give them all like stacks of block and ward using equipment gain. Seems important. All right, Hawk, you will... <clears throat> Actually, what are we doing for the third level of Brides of Veritas? None of them have reached it so far, so I guess we're defining it now. Uh, no, neither of those two good. Iridus getting mana there is not particularly good for us either. Get away from him is for increasing the target's chance to escape. This build would actually be really, really good at making vampires. I think if we end up with enough experience, we'll focus on getting vampires. Maybe we do vampires, in fact. Like, because get away from him gives me the ability to try and make the enemies escape. But I guess as soon as I do get them on low stress or low sanity, and then I am using get away from him, like, I'm probably going to kill them rather than make them run away. I don't know if I want to build around the chance to escape being increased by 25%. Interrupt stances being guaranteed is pretty good though, but it means that I'm no longer moving targets back one space. And not being able to move targets back one space is pretty bad when you consider the... What are they called? The flamethrowers on the next floor, as well as any of the fireworks people. Because our whole thing is we need to stop them from moving forward. This does also make it impossible for them to move forward. But if they have ward, then you won't get him isn't going to hit them the entire time while they're advancing. And then as soon as they've advanced to the front, I can't move them back. There's a part of me that's considering the upgrade to Flames of Eternal Love. That consideration is mostly made on the part of wanting a little bit of extra HP. But extra attack is really good if I am going to be going for crit. I think maybe I just take the extra attack on Flames of Passion of Love. So we have, at the moment, stocked, like, basically the strongest party we have. I guess Hawk doesn't have the Echo Accuracy, so we could throw Carl instead. Yeah, I will. Carl the Wild's pretty far from level, so is Mom's. Damn. Alright. So we know we're going out this direction. Right? One, two, three, four, five versus one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure if this is the battle that I pop the gambling chip. All enemies gain plus 20 vigor until battle ends, but I get six additional common parts after the battle. I think it is. I think this is probably going to be the least impactful of the battles. I also think probably we're going to want to save 100 mana for the final fight and then put the scroll of Skullfall on. Use Skullfall twice in the fight. It costs 40 mana at a time, but it just shreds enemy parties. It's going to be really, really good for isolating the Keymaster. Nine minutes, no fights. Actually, I think I fought someone this episode. Never mind. Nine minutes, a fight. It's fine. Okay. Now, I'm absolutely certain there's nothing I want to do out here. I think I am waiting just on the library right now. <sighs> Excavation hall still feels like something I should have opened earlier. I don't know. Maybe that's dumb. We actually have two full parties, weirdly. Hmm. Okay. Go to the battle. 
Uh, yeah, we've got the fire starter there in the back line. Demolitions expert, I think that name is actually. Uh, no reason to do anything except for the double strike there. Do I want to start stressing out the demolitions? No, I just... I want to start possibly critting them. If they skip a turn, that's super useful for you. There we go. Nearly 27 damage. Distributed across the party. And you got to move forward. Rough stuff. Hey, can't stun the immune. Good crit though. Uh, unfortunately, I do think we still need to be slicing through these enemies, so I don't think it's time to start taunting up. I think after our Bride's Viridus are dealing, like, really considerable damage consistently, then we can consider starting to taunt up. That's a good stun. I don't want to do two stuns on the same target, so either I have the Bride of Viridus wait until the end of the turn, so I can act after the Demolition's Expert, or I Long Piercer the Miner in the front line. I think I'll do that one. Hey! Last few <clears throat> Good work. Fresh Stole another action away from the enemies. Oh, come on. That's not fair. How do you target the third line with a stun? You. Yeah, big old meanie. Uh, I'm going to go for the attack, but... It might be correct to start trying to remove the Demolition's Expert backwards. Yeah, especially now that you're in the front line. Although, I don't know. Maybe I just kill them. It's pretty likely at the moment. Yep. Yeah, this is just going to be a kill. Throw the throws for a lady through all of them. And have the Brides of Viridus focus on the target that has no armor because the other characters, those skeletons, can get through that armor much more effectively. Ooh, hopeless, right before your turn. That's really good for us. Just lowers the incoming attack by 50%. Hey, beautiful. Okay, that's a good stun. Yeah, I'm going to try and throw a stun against the next member. Had to try. It's going to be far more useful than stacking a second stun on the same character. God, a lot of HP, God. Or maybe my skeletons just do no damage. It's one of the two. I'm not sure which. Good stun again. All right, we might be able to take out the guard with the shot here. So, this is what a thousand like a little bit of a chance to take out that guard like. with that shot there. Yeah, Goodbye, hunky. Really wish we had a heal for all of our party members here. Yikes. Yeah, I think we actually just swap parties right now. Just like complete, maybe throw moms into this one. And then just completely swap parties. So now, at the very least, we are doing a little bit more best practices in terms of having two squads, right? Although they're not necessarily very diverse at the oh, moment. That's probably a fair point to make. I uh, got that. Now I can go for transplantation. Let's have to actually look at how many excess parts we have. Not much. Definitely not much. So after we get Grey Matter, we're running further up the left side of this line to get to Scalpel Artist, I think. Skipping Relentless Evil entirely, opting instead to just sub in and sub out different characters over time. Uh, and then running down Blood Curse. Because I still think we have the ability to like physically kill everyone except for the final target and then strike them with the Blood Curse and wait. Especially because we have the ability to taunt up. All right, back to the dungeon, and we shall take standard darkness, please. No. 
So there's the Archmage's robes. All enemies lose negative one ward at the beginning of each battle. It's lose one ward, but it's phrased weirdly. Uh, hmm. I definitely don't want to wear it right now. I like the plus three armor we're getting. It has saved characters for me already. Just the plus three armor that all my minions get. That's going to matter less next floor when there's more ward on enemies and more physical attack. So maybe I take the Archmage's robes just to prepare for that. There's also the Shackles of War. Enemies can't become inspired, and that's actually a little bit useful. But that's useful in the ring slot, isn't it? Yeah, that's useful in the ring slot. And the ring slot already has my luck modifier. So we'll take the Archmage's robes. More for me. Okay. Battle the next one. Yikes. Yeah, this one's a little bit of a problem. A lot of buffs are going to go out on the enemy members, so the longer the fight goes, the far, far, far worse off we are. We also don't have the ability to remove the buffs from them at all in this party. At the very least, those buffs are also going to cause... What? Kyle? Oh, no. Both of my skeletons are level 2, so they don't actually have the increased smite yet. Oh, that's really bad. Oh, well. Gotta do what I gotta do. Thanks. If we were hitting per buff, this would be so good for us already. Gosh, it would have been lovely to steal his turn there. Now, Rose for a Lady should yep, kill that second liner for us. And I think I will just focus on the Swordsmans. The, uh, the Taskmasters, while they are dishing out buffs and traps, their damage is still relatively low compared to the Swordsman here on the field. Thankfully, the Swordsman just got mad unlucky, so it's very likely they miss. Never mind, they did a giant crit and then a still in not insignificant amount of damage in the second attack. That's really sad. I would very much like if all of our skeletons lived through this battle. Uh, Drew, you're going to have to taunt because otherwise I suspect you won't. <laughs> Enemies attack this minion more often, my ass. As if. I swear taunt barely works in this game. Although I would only notice when it doesn't work rather than when it does because confirmation. Like, it's it's difficult to prove that they're negative in that circumstance, but still. <laughs> this never gets old. Here's another pop of a taunt. Looks like we may actually get Drew out of this battle safely. Hey, see? The armor completely absorbed that attack. Alright, Tarski Masty. Let's stun him. No. Nope. How about the next one? Actually, the Flames of Passionate Love is going to be, yeah, far better for us. And that attack can't miss, so we didn't have to taunt in case. Mop up the gore. I hate to see plants using it as fertilizer. Okay, I'll be taking one of these back, throwing one of those back up. Actually, I think I'll also... Yeah, we now have the fully level 3 party, if I'm willing to run moms again. Vampire, we'll make a vampire quickly. Excellent. Low level equipment as well. Mine is the hand that feeds you. All right, library, we'll be expanding you just a little more. I think maybe, like, the strongest thing that I've been doing is just focusing on the library recently. Getting the passive stuff up in the talent tree is just so important, in my opinion. Wait a second, I haven't even got love potion yet. Why Why did I get amateur surgeon or transplantation? I could have sworn I'd already unlocked it. Okay, yeah, that's my bad. 
We'll focus on that now. Uh, so I can have 20% more chance to find stuff, but that's... No, it's an elite squad. I can't run moms in that elite squad right now. Moms mostly stands in the back line, so Flames of Passionate Love actually seems like a bad upgrade for you. I I'll still give it. Right, it's an elite enemy next for us. Yikes. I think I will scout that with a garbage minion, just a wraith or something. Okay. Ooh, we can get extra ward and extra lock upon receiving damage. That's not bad. Uh, when debuffing a target, gain six accuracy. Uh, it counts as debuffing a target to crit them, so that's actually pretty useful as well. When moving attack up for two turns, yeah, probably not that. Uh, I think maybe we take the black heart here. Because on both of our skeletons, what we're ultimately going to want is ward and block. So black heart and blood diamonds. Amazing that they just leave you lying around. Amazing indeed. Let's go for a wraith because it's using no overlapping materials that we're using to craft the rest of our party right now. We've got the stair layer after the next. Okay, is this is this a big problem for us? We have the ability to destance these enemies pretty easily. So I don't think it's a big problem in that way. Unfortunately, the uh, uh unfortunately the demolitions expert actually managed to move forward in that turn. Okay. Target can't move during... Oh, god damn. Target can't move during their next turn actually would have made that worthwhile. I'm skipping so that the enemy doesn't move forward again. Because I think the positioning does actually stay. Did moms get a little bit of a heal out of that battle? Like out of the death of all of my other units? Also, in that party, there were no enemies that Archmage's robes would affect. I think we do have to use the rig cage armor, but I think we swap to Nobleman's Garb afterwards. And I think, actually, we do just take uh, the Ballard, Herconian, Serpent Frog, and Mom's party in here. Yeah. Wait, maybe I give out the... Black Ward first. Yeah. Yeah. Increases your luck for those crits as well. It's going to be good. Beautiful. Unfortunately, the Elite Demons use Experts in the third line now. Uh, that said, maybe I actually open up by moving them backwards. But if I do that, Moms has a worse turn. And I have Harkonian actually flame some passionate love here. Just ignite them and then they immediately blow up. Whew. Dodge. This will be your yeah, I don't want Moms moving out of that position because Moms gets the extra healing as well as the extra accuracy while staying in the back line. So I think it's really important. Unfortunately, since we're not responding to the enemies while we're using Astounding Fortitude, it's really, like, action negative. We do need to get a Hunky off the field pretty quickly, though. Their stuns can be really, really annoying. They can't stun any of my frontliners here, sure, but they do have the ability to stun my third liner. And they can deposition my units pretty easily. Damn it! See? You just moved that guy forward! That's exactly what I don't want to have happen. Yeah, and unfortunately now I need to move in order to prevent you from keeping them there. God, that's awful. Mom's crits through the whole party, and in doing so... What did you earn for all of those crits? What did you earn? 
Oh, plus four vigor for three turns. Stacks up to three times. Hell yeah. You're just going to heal the hell up. This is awful. The elite damage list expert gets further forward if I do this. I think I have to turn around and focus on them now. Oh no, the first... Oh, but I can't rely on that ordering. Uh, Could have gotten the hunky down. Okay. Lead damage legions expert. Don't start the turn yourself. You started the turn yourself. Uh, so the lead damage expert uh, has an ability called lighten up. Explodes at the beginning of his next turn, killing himself and all characters in battle. Uh, and it can't be cancelled. So, we now need to kill the elite damage expert right now or we lose our whole party. This is why I didn't want them to go to the front of the party so badly. But everyone kept moving them there. That's not a crit. I don't even think the stuns, like, I don't even think a crit stun will stop the enemy. Like, it can't be cancelled. It's at the start of their next turn that they do it. Of his next turn. So I need to roll really, really high on everyone except for the Elite Demolitions Experts uh, initiative so that I can kill it in time. Come on. Don't you dare roll higher than me on every character. Okay. We have a chance. Got him. Woo! All right. That was really stressful. Shield banger is only 40, and if I do it two times here, we actually mostly kill these enemies. Yeah, it's going to be really hard to physically kill these enemies, so I think I actually will go with the stress. Especially because we're already a little way on the stress. We had some good progress already going, is what I'm saying. Couple checks for the lethal there. Doesn't manage to find it, though. Okay. Shield bang again. Misses both of them! Oh, God. Well, that's awful. There's a crit. That could kill. Hey, and it does. Beautiful. Woo! Makes up a little bit for that underwhelming shield banger. Okay, that's a crit. That could kill you. No. Hey, there we go. Beautiful. A sad display of the mortal kind. That's a whole elite squad right down there. Or down right there, rather. I can now actually take Love Potion as well. A little bit late, but we've finally done it. Uh, after a victory, all minions that survive gain an additional two experience points. That's going to be really good for getting a lot of our other levels up to three, so... Wow, did I not heal all of my characters? Oh, no, I was fine. Yeah, I, I didn't have the ability to heal all my characters, though. All right. Uh... Serpent Frog, you need Mystic Fortitude. Yeah, you just need the extra HP on both of you. Because you are being used as shields for all the rest of our characters. All right, Moms goes in the back line. Carl of the Wild in the second. Drew and then Kyle in the front line. Yeah, if I do actually equip the artifact here, Mimir, everyone is going to be level three at the end of this next combat. I specifically don't use Steelies for minion experience. I mentioned before that it's a mutable form of progression in this game. And also, the EXP for Iridus is always just, like, a lot better, I found. <clears throat> okay, so I can take either of these. The ability to full heal after the next combat actually means something to me. <clears throat> so it means something to me because I have Hark that's on low HP here, but the Mortuary is already full. Hmm. 
I think I will go with the path, uh, the path that gives me the possibility of restoration. And then... Because then I have the possibility of restoration. I use my best squad in this battle against the golems. Then I use my off squad against the hunkies. And then I have my best squad ready, refreshed, totally standard and set for the boss encounter. I think that's uh, floor planning 101 right there. I think that's pretty straightforward. All right, let's go. I am a little worried about the fact that I've got like a bunch of level twos going into this fight. God damn it! Ah, these things annoy me so much. Um, fine. I can't even move any of them back at the moment. Actually, if I have both of my... The minion in the back line moves forward. I, so this demolition expert moves first. So they're actually going to move forward across this one. And then the other one will move. So they're just going to cycle themselves right now. So I'm going to start focusing damage on them. I definitely don't want to crit stun them. Because then I break that chain. I do need to start working through one of these guards though. Actually, if I crit stun the first one, that's fine. So I can still target you with this. Good. Your new existence. Oh, yeah. I didn't think about the fact that there's another guard that was going to act there. <sighs> nice work, Ryan. Will overflow. All right, I'll push... That one back. Oh, God. Forgot about the offensive stance there. Actually, that turn would have worked out how I wanted the previous turn to work out if I didn't involve myself in it at all. I made things worse. Oh, that's right. Hey, there we go. Got him down at least. Pretty serious damage both times. Since I'm in the back line, I can use this. Since I'm in the back line, I can't move backwards myself, so I don't trigger the defensive stance. Ooh. Solid damage to the guard. Uh, I'm going to continue the solid damage to the guard here. Especially because that demolition expert wants to escape, so I don't even need to do anything to them. That said, I still do probably want them to die if I have any influence over it. Yeah. Would have gotten extra parts if they died. Oh well. You're already dying to the fire. So I can have everyone else do everything else. Oh, God damn it! We moved again! I always forget about that. Well, I'm gonna have to roll the chance again. God damn it. I really didn't want that unit to have a turn. And yet they did. God damn it. Oh, the fallibility of stress builds that use single instances. <laughs> It's pretty rough. All right. Unfortunately, basically everyone in my party wants to be healed right now. All right, Kyle, you get smite, smite, flames, and then moms, you're my first level four. Ignoring armor with deadly watch actually seems pretty useful. Specifically next floor, that seems useful. Because there's a lot of shuffling. But I'm not doing any shuffling myself, which makes Deadly Watch seem like it could also just whiff really hard. I don't really want to start picking up things that could just whiff really hard that early. I think I do have to take You Won't Get Him. Now, prove yourself worthy of my investment. 
Yeah, so unfortunately, Harkonian probably needs the heal a little more than Carl, but has worse equipment. So, Hark, you've probably just been downgraded to my B team. Sorry. Just not in the best position there. Okay. So, we go to the dungeon, full heal this squad. Excellent. I can even throw Ballard and Serpent Frog in there. Actually, I will do as well. So that is a full A squad. I will take the Nobleman's Garb now as well. So I'm starting to get extra percentages. Anything else I need to do here? Gaining Wrath faster with Dark Enlightenment could actually be really interesting. Because then it could just be like Call of the Wild and Moms just constantly popping off Master's Rose and just killing every enemy. Maybe. Maybe. For the moment, though, I know that we've got some golems to fight. Let's go. Lums. <sighs> yeah, the, uh, the headsman's a little bit of a problem. Although the headsman can't debuff any of my frontliners here with the I will insta-kill this target, which I think makes them not a problem. So when I classified them as a problem, what I was doing was lying, apparently. That said, both of my frontliners there probably should have just popped a Mystic Fortitude, for real. So buff, measures the strength, you move yourself forward. Uh, ideally, I would like to start moving you backwards, but yeah, whatever, I don't really care. Uh, that said, I don't want to fire at that Mad Mage right now. Alright, fine. Stun? Nope. The Headsman is going to constantly buff their attack, even if they don't hit any of my minions in the other way. With the insta-kill. So I still should focus on them a little bit, at least when it's available. Especially with Smite the Show-Offs, though. The Mad Mage actually has two stacks of buffs on them, so I probably should have been targeting them. Yeah, missing most of those is pretty, pretty disappointing. Pretty, pretty disappointing. Nice damage. All right, that one was actually nice damage. Yikes, now I'm scared. Don't, stop, 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 stop missing, please. Hey, finally. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that, thank you. And another crit for another stun, yeah. The fact that we have, like, 50-50 for these crits, so we're stealing half of the time an enemy's action away, is what I thought would make this build work. And it seems to be. Perfect. And now I can work my way through the golem. The skeletons being the frontliner here, like, they address a lot of problems. So at the very least, that's good. But also, like, there's a little bit that's missing from the party, like the possibility of making enemies, uh... What was it? Uh... Not stunning them. Obviously, sustain, like, healing is missing. Oh, yeah, moving the enemies, right? For the sake of Overwatch is not a possibility. Oh, damn it. Stunning the animal and hell out of that enemy. This is what a thousand years of evolution looks like. Uh although even if I stun this enemy, they still run away, so. It's only if I kill them in time. Ooh! We got a lot closer to killing them than I thought we would. And never mind, we rolled higher in them uh, higher than them in initiative, so we actually do get to kill them. Lovely. My will is a So that Lancet is 10% higher chance to find parts. 
It embellishes my morbid features. That plus the nobleman's garb here in the early game, I think is gonna help me get enough parts to really make something happen. Uh, I'll take calcination, but it's surgical practice and scalpel artist that we're going for next. Okay, so you three need to, uh, I guess it is only those two that really need to rest. The only difference between you two is a little bit of extra accuracy on the weapon. Okay, so we'll throw Kyle into the party. That said, I was intentionally not taking my best party for this one, right? Yes, yes, of course, because I have another encounter after that. So do I take Neo out? I don't know. Neo seems like a bad idea. Just a bit low level, bud. I've only a level two brain. I could throw that in Neo right now. It's only worth one experience point, but still okay. As long as I end up with Lung Piercer. All right, Neo. You're level two now. And I'll pop you in the back line just because Harkonian in the third line has access to Flames of Passionate Love, which is upgraded. My enemies are in for a nasty surprise. And then Drew takes the front line of here. Kyle in the second line is more likely to be... More likely to be striking than stunning. No, I don't think there's any impact there. While I can unlock another space in the mortuary, obviously I'm waiting for the final space in the library first. Yeah, and I'm trying to farm as, uh, farm as much out of this battle as possible. Oh, wait! If I'm trying to farm as much out of this battle as possible, I have to have moms in there. Otherwise, the nobleman's cloak isn't working. <laughs> so, sorry, uh, sorry, Neo. You don't come along for this one. I tried to work it out in a way that you would, but you don't. Again, we have an elite enemy here. Huge problem. I, I am just going to straight up focus them with both of the... <clears throat> both of the Brides of Iridus here. Oh, that's great damage. I think I'll also start for... Uh, I'll start focusing on the headman. The, if I kill these conscripts, I'm just leaving space for the elite demolitions expert to come forward right now. So I think I'll start working on the enemy that I am going to want down soon anyway. <clears throat> I'm hoping they buff themselves. Nope. Yikes. Hell of a lot of damage right there. Um... Wait, this is the target is unable to move in the next turn. Beautiful. <clears throat> yeah, unfortunately, I did have to allow a Sinister Strike to go off to do that. Which was a lot of damage that I just took. Woo! Nice stun. That conscript is a problem. I kind of want to stun them. The problem is I don't want to move them with anyone except for my Bride of Iridus in the back line. Because the Bride of Iridus in the back line doesn't move them. Because uh, I don't want to move the Demolitions Expert forward. So there's a lot of... There's actually a lot of movement tech and movement management going on here. <clears throat> a lot more than I expected. Oh, no. All right, Hark obviously needs to run as far backwards as possible as quickly as possible. So let's do that. Keep on going on the Hesman. Keep on keeping on. Great, and... Decent damage, not a kill though. I think I'm gonna rose for a lady twice really soon here. Ooh, 
Second Rose of Lady is a kill now. Great. Yeah, a little bit of stress across the party there. Uh, I'm not going to use the Rose for a Lady here. Number one, because I don't have access to it. Number two, because it was going to be bad for the sake of the Elite Demolition, uh, Demolitions Expert here. Let's just move you backwards. Mm -hmm. Ooh, good betrayal. Rose for a Lady through all of them. And we are now pretty much set for the end of the game. Death. Hey, that'll do it. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, unfortunately, Hawk did take a pretty, pretty significant hit in this combat. Yeah, Hawk, you're going down to the other, Serve other tier well, of party. Sorry about that. Minion. Serpent Frog comes in, Drew goes out, and then we take our final two as well. Beautiful. Because they've got all of the equipment, they've got all of the stats, they've got all of that kind of stuff going for them. Drop you two back up. We now have the ability to unlock the final area in the graveyard, so let's go do that. Hopefully the last bone, uh, bone golem I have to make for a while, just because they're very expensive for resources that I need. Definitely can't do anything at this point. Artifacts. Anything I want to change here? Yeah, I, I don't care about Nobleman's Garb or the Lancet for the boss fight, obviously. Alright. Rest of that is pretty much set. I may or may not take the Scroll of Skullfall into the combat. I'll think about that in between the episodes. But until then, my name is Ben Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Physical. Apparently a strap? Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.